Let's sanctify our spears and anoint our halberds, because today we're talking about the new Celestian Sacrosants, which I believe are perhaps one of the strongest options in the new Sisters Codex. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we've been going through the new Sisters units one by one, and today we're looking at one of the units that I was most keen to talk about, the elite bodyguards of the Emperor's Faithful, the Celestian Sacrosants. I think that of all the new Sisters models, Games Workshop has perhaps done best with these. They're really lovely sculpts and fit in well with the main Sisters roster. In particular, I think that those halberds look incredibly cool. In the lore, they're a heavily armoured bodyguard version of the Celestians, and often serve as an elite guard for the Canonesses as they charge forward into battle to purge the enemies of the Emperor. Games Workshop sells them for £34.50 or $55, US though if you're in the UK you can get them a bit cheaper from Element Games. I'll leave a link down to them in the video description below, I believe they're less than £30 from them. In any case, let's jump in, talk about their rules in-game, and why I think they're going to be quite common in competitive Sisters lists. So Celestian Sacrosants are an elite's choice for the Sisters of Battle. In the squad you get 1 Sacrosant Superior, and 4-9 to nine Elite Sisters. They essentially have the profile of a standard Celestian, but with a Storm Shield tacked on top, a 6 inch move, hitting on 3s, Strength and Toughness 3, 1 Wound, 2 attacks, Leadership 8, and a mighty 2 plus armor save, further augmented by a 4 plus invul. It's quite an unusual profile within Warhammer 40k. We've got quite a lot of units that bear big meaty shields into battle, having high armor saves and high invuls, but very few models that are 1 wound and toughness 3. It means that you're weirdly going to want to fire moderately high AP damage 1 shots to deal with them most efficiently. They really will be quite resistant to small arms behind that 2 plus save. Each model is equipped with a bolt pistol and frag and crack grenades, so have a little bit of ranged damage output, and then they have their primary combat weapon, either a hallowed mace or an anointed halbard. The mace is strength 5, AP minus 2 and damage 2, the halbard is strength 6, AP minus 3 but damage 1. I think the two are at least fairly well balanced, I will go through their damage output in just a second. For unit options, the only one that can take anything different is the sacrosanct superior. She can take a spear of the faithful, and I'd basically always do that for 5 points. It basically gives you the best of both worlds between the halbard and the mace. Strength 6, AP minus 3 and damage 2, and because she's got 3 attacks base anyway, she'll get to hit with it quite a lot. Pretty much an auto-include in my book. Otherwise, she can take 1 pistol from the pistol list, a hand flamer, inferno pistol or plasma pistol. Maybe the inferno pistol could be worth a shout if they're piling out of transports, though I'd probably not bother with either of the others. They have all the normal Sisters of Battle special rules, they are a core unit, they have Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, and Shield of Faith, and then they have two very helpful defensive special rules. The first one is their Bodyguard ability, which means if you're within 3 inches of an Order or Sanctified character, that character can't be targeted by ranged attacks. You'll have to go through these durable sacrosancts first. All very good, and particularly makes buffing characters for these girls quite strong. They're not just going to get sniped dead by some Eliminators or something. Perhaps even more impressive though, is their Keepers of the Faith special rule. This gives the Sacrosants a Heroic Intervention ability. This is really good for brutally holding midfield objectives, as it means that if you park a Sacrosant squad over the objective, your opponent can't just trot up an objective secured unit and whisk it away from under your nose. You'll be able to step forward and hit them very hard with some maces or halbards. On top of that, they're particularly dangerous when your opponent charges them as well. They get to set to defend, ignore their own fairly pitiful overwatch, but they get plus one to hit in the ensuing fight phase. That could certainly make them a risky proposition to charge, particularly seeing as those storm shields with the high invul saves means that your opponent can never really guarantee that they're just going to wipe out the unit straight away. If you roll really hot, you could be striking back by quite a lot of sisters. Finally, they are core, so they get to make the best use of all the order buffs, and they do also have the Celestian keyword, allowing them to gain access to the plus one to hit stratagem. Overall, I think they look really strong. They're one of the tankiest units that Sisters of Battle get. They've got dangerous melee output and a couple of really nice special rules. So which power weapons to choose when you're equipping your Sacrosants then? Here's a small comparison of the damage output between the Hallowed Maces and those Anointed Halbards. I do think that they're at least relatively well balanced. The Halbards win out against light armoured hordes such as Guardsmen, where they'll kill 6 Guardsmen to the 4 of the Maces. Interestingly, the Halbards actually do better against things like Gravis Armour, Speed wound marines and high toughness actually means that the high AP and strength wins out. They'll do 4 wounds to the hallowed maces 3, but the multi damage of the maces does slightly win out against 2 wound infantry like intercessors, and to high toughness vehicles such as toughness 7 or 8 things. 
In general, I think that both of them seem quite even, though I would bear in mind that if you're playing Bloody Rose, I think that the maces might just get a little bit ahead. The maces go from AP-1 to AP-2, which is a bigger jump than minus 3 to minus 4. That's generally going to make them just a bit more of a take all commas option. The maces also gain a bit more from the Bloody Rose stratagem from auto-wounding, as they are a bit lower strength, so not quite as likely to wound many things anyway. Overall though, I think it's quite good that both options are fairly well balanced. The maces are worse against things that do minus 1 damage, like Dreadnoughts or Death Guard, and it means that you don't have to feel too bad about equipping the unit whichever way you think looks best. Moving on, as a core unit, the Sacrosancts have quite a lot of good buffs and synergies going on. Sacred Rites are very helpful for them, getting plus 1 to charge will get them into combat better, and Exploding Sixes in melee really amps up their damage when they're there. Miracle Dice could be expended to auto-pass charges, or maybe even make a save or two if it's really crucial. Maybe you could expend a Miracle Dice of 4 to auto-save a wound. They gain good value from quite a lot of the orders, in particular I really like Bloody Rose with them. Extra AP and an extra attack will near enough double their damage output against certain targets, particularly things like Powered Armored Space Marines. Their auto-wound stratagem on sixes as well will really help tear down heavy units. Otherwise though, our Mastered Lady is quite good on the Sacrosans. They'll be hitting on a plus one if they've taken any casualties. And Sacrosans are maybe a bit more of a likely unit to take some casualties without being completely wiped out due to those durable Storm Shields. Valorous Heart really plays into their durability as well. AP minus one and minus two weapons just won't be anywhere near as efficient on them. And a five plus feel no pain against mortal wounds does actually really blunt one of the best ways to remove them easily. Finally, Ebon Chalice could be a good option for getting double the sacred rites, both the plus one to charge and the exploding sixes all game long. The Sacrosants really like the Rhino. I would say, compared with some of the other sisters' options, it's maybe not absolutely 100% mandatory, as they are quite tough. Still though, for 225 points, transporting a full 10 sister squad with a spear, you've got a really durable threat in the midfield, which your opponent will have to chew through the tough rhino, before they even think about getting to work on the high save sisters unit that lurks within. You could think about mixing and matching as well, adding 5 dominions and 5 sacrosants into the rhino, and the dominions allow the rhino to do a pre-game move, potentially allowing a first turn charge for the sacrosants if the opponent's in any way far forward. Another option could also be strategic reserve, have the Sacrosants turn up on the flank of an army, and then maybe make an auto-charge with a few Miracle Dice. Could delete an enemy target, then put a durable threat somewhere in their backfield. For character support, Melee Sisters have an absolute ton of options. You're not going to want to bring them all, so you will have to pick and choose which ones you think bring most value. Morvan Vile is pretty much the premier buffing unit right now. Giving them full rerolls to hit and wound in combat against something will crazily amp up their damage. For example, a Bloody Rose Sacrosanct unit with Val's rerolls and the Maces. They'll do around about 20 wounds to a Battle Tank or Imperial Knight, and potentially more if you use the Bloody Rose stratagem. Otherwise, Canonesses and Palatines can provide their rerolls. The Dogmata could provide War Hymns and make them Obsec. That's pretty excellent for a midfield durable melee unit. Those Hymns of Battle could give you a plus one attack, making them more dangerous still, or maybe an extra Sacred Rite to get those Exploding Sixes or plus one to charge. For our Martyred Lady, you could have Junith Arita to give them re-rolls and cover. A Triumph of St. Catherine, if nearby, could give them plus one to their attacks. A Hospitaller could give them a feel-no-pain save, and maybe set some new Sacrosants up by using their stratagem. And an Imagifier can give them all plus one strength, and re-roll their charge distance. Tons of options here, to be honest. I think that Morven Vile is a really strong pick, as we've already talked about in other videos. But Dog Martyrs, Hospitallers, and Imagifiers all seem to bring really quite good value. Maybe if you're bringing multiple units of Sacrosants, then you could have them all working together to turn your force into something truly scary. For Stratagems, they also have a fair few good options. They can get the standard Celestium one of plus one to hit, if you just want an extra 20% damage output. You can spend a command point to take the Blessings of Sebastian Thor on the Sister Superior. That could give them both the plus one to charge and Exploding Six's Sacred Rites. If you have a Priest nearby, then it's one command point for Holy Rage, or four rerolls to hit with Zealot. And finally, Inviolate Shield Wall is a really nice melee debuff. It means that your opponent is minus one to wound you in combat, something that's really handy on low toughness sisters. Even the strongest attacks will be wounding you on threes at best. Lots of solid options here, and you could really stack buffs as high as the sky. Realistically though, I think you're going to get the most bang for your buck, with maybe a cheap character or two, or just having them run up alongside Val, who's going to provide a lot of value just for her own raw strength. So how would I personally think about using Celestian Sacrosants in-game? 
Ideally, I'd think about using them in Bloody Rose, and hopefully using the Exploding Sixes Sacred Rite for the extra damage output if possible. Obviously, that would depend on the rest of the army, though. I think you could have quite a different feel on the battle line as to whether or not you put them in Rhinos or not. As I said earlier, 10 of them in a Rhino seems fairly cheap and pretty threatening for 225 points, some solid protection as they move up, and then hopefully having a charge out of the Rhino when they're completely fresh to destroy an enemy unit utterly. You could maybe think about dropping one of the Sacrosants for a character. Perhaps the Fighty Cannoness might be a reasonable choice. You could also go for the more multiple small unit approach and put 5 in a Rhino alongside 5 Melter Dominions. Then your Rhino could move 6 inches pre-game and hopefully have both threatening squads right in range to engage the enemy army right from turn 1. I really am interested to see if anyone's going to make them work on foot though. Sort of maybe in a similar role to Space Marine Blade Guard Veterans. Just as a tanky Storm Shield unit slogging up the board and that the enemy doesn't really want to get too close because their melee potential is very scary. Maybe take 2 or 3 max size squads which seems quite reasonable for 420 points for that many high save sisters, and then have some buffing characters, as I said before, maybe more than Val, and have a Dogmata, Imagify, and Hospitaller around there, to make them into truly awesome melee threats, give them a feel no pain save, and restore a few downed sisters with a stratagem each turn. In game, I think that they look like they're quite a good bully unit, moving forward to taking the midfield objectives, parking themselves on there, and then heroically intervening against anyone who tries to take it off them. If they can get some light cover, their high saves mean that they really want to. They'd then also be able to laugh off AP-1 weapons on a 2 plus armor save still. And maybe a few chunky units of these could be a good anvil to the army, where your more fast moving and hard hitting threats can run around, and they could absorb a fair bit of the enemy hatred. In terms of weaknesses, for a melee unit they're not desperately fast, and they are a bit susceptible to mortal wounds to be honest. Something like an Admec Archaeopter Fuselav could really do a number on these if they're in the open. Just something to bear in mind, and might make either strategic reserves or rhinos just that little bit more tempting. Finally, how do they hold up against Repentia and other options within the Codex? I think Repentia are perhaps the most obvious comparison to these. They cost the same number of points, and are another Elite Sisters unit with a truckload of melee damage. They do hit harder than the Sacrosants, with Strength 6, AP-3 and Damage 2 weapons, with built-in rerolls, a Fights in Death stratagem, and a very easy plus 1 to wound with their Repentia superior where a full unbuffed squad of Sacrosants with the Maces do around about 11 wounds to a vehicle unit, a full squad of Repentia with plus 1 to wound from a superior do around about 18 or 19. They just do hit a little bit harder, and their buffs are a bit better. The main downside though is that Repentia will die to a stiff breeze in return, so if they can't just make back their points cost in one round of combat, you might be in for a slightly bad time. Sacrosants can do a fair amount of damage, but then they give your opponent a really strong unit that's going to be tough to remove, and that's going to create far more pressure on them in the next turn, and maybe leave other units in your army alive that otherwise might have died. Perhaps for a chunky advancing threat, Mortifiers or Penitent Engines might be another competitor. Of course, Mortifiers bring a whole ton of shooting as well as their melee attacks, but I'd say they perhaps have less durability due to their lack of an invul save, and of course they have no synergies whatsoever with the rest of the buffing characters in the Codex. Definitely another option though if you just want to surge things forward at the enemy. Finally, Paragon Warsuits also hit very hard in melee, and again they have very good range damage output, and are a core unit too, but they are far more fragile to enemy shooting, a few good anti-tank shots could be rapidly bringing them down, and that just isn't the case if you're targeting the Sacrosants. Overall, I think that the Celestian Sacrosants are perhaps one of the strongest units in the new sisters' decks, a good balance of raw hitting power and survivability, and some very helpful special rules, buffs and stratagems. I'll certainly look forward to seeing if they are included in competitive lists going forward, and what people manage to make of them. If you have any other insights, please let me know down in the comments, or just any in-game experience that you've acquired with the Sacrosants so far. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the sisters' unit reviews and videos coming. I'm looking forward to getting to grips with a new codex, hopefully we might do some comparison of the various different orders at some point. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention the Auspex Tactics Patreon page, which is how I can keep these videos coming quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next for the channel, and automatic entry to the channel's monthly prize giveaway, with the chance to win some really big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.